Okay, so here's um, some conceptual. Uh, here's some more discussion on one way ANOVA. We introduced it last time. These are the learning objectives for this lecture. <clears throat> uh, recognize the relevant components in Excel um, from an Excel output when you perform an ANOVA test. Uh, degrees of freedom. We'll talk about degrees of freedom because they're a little bit different um, from what we've encountered before with other tests. Uh, how to compute an F statistic and what can we conclude um, from an F statistic that is um, statistically significant. Okay, so if you haven't already, go ahead and view the video on how to perform the analysis in Excel using the tool pack. It's pretty straightforward. Uh, it'll be Pretty similar to what you've done before. Yeah, just go ahead and check that out. This is the type of output that you're going to get. Okay, so this is the actual output from that video. You've got um, summary here, just some summary statistics, um, and then the results of the ANOVA test. It's always a good idea to check over your averages just to get a feel for um, what the averages are and whether they're different. That's really, that's really what you're testing is if one is different from the other. You can see we've got treatment two that seems really small compared to treatment three in the control. So probably there's going to be a difference here. And you can see that we do have a big F statistic here. Um, and if this F statistic is big, then the p-value should be small. And yeah, it's really small. 5.73 times 10 to the negative 12th. This is the critical value that you need. So if the F statistic is bigger than this, then you can conclude that it's statistically significant. You can reject the null hypothesis. Remember the null hypothesis for an ANOVA test, a one-way ANOVA test, is that all the means are equal. Mu1 equals mu2 equals mu3 three equals mu4, okay? The F statistic is actually calculated by taking the mean square between groups and the mean square, uh, dividing it by the mean square within groups. So the between group variation divided by the within group variation. And you'll recall that this is why it's called an analysis of variance, ANOVA, uh, because you're looking at how the variation between groups compares to the variation within groups. And you can see that the there's quite a bit of variation in the sample means um, and within each group the, the variance is also pretty tight. So that's kind of the ideal case um, where you have a lot of variation between sample means um, but not much variation within each sample. And that means you've got like four distributions that are quite, the centers are quite different from each other and they're also very tight. So that's strong evidence that they're not equal to each other. Okay. A couple more components. <clears throat> the degrees of freedom. Okay, so right here, um, there's actually two um, degrees of freedom for an ANOVA test. Um, this number 61, you can see that is calculated here. Now how did I get that? This is just a sum that I calculated of all of the degrees of freedom for each sample um, calculated as n minus 1. So 15 minus 1, 17 minus 1. Um, these are the, the sample sizes for each of these groups. And subtract one from each, add them all up, and that is your within groups um, degrees of freedom. Okay, so that's one of the degrees of freedom that you need. The other one, 3, that is the number of groups that you have minus one. Okay, so it's um, it's not exactly n minus one, it's actually k minus one. k is the symbol that's used to denote how many groups you're comparing in a one-way ANOVA. Okay, so, and this, the, this is the total. Basically this is um, the sum of all, all of these, 65 minus one, but um, it's also just <laughs> this plus this. Um, so those are degree, those degrees of freedom, those two numbers, you'll need to report um, when you're writing up a methods section. 
Um, you'll put those in parentheses after the F, as I'll explain later. And then one last thing, just so you know what these numbers are here, I don't think you'll ever really use them. I, I don't believe I ever have. But these are the sum of squares. So basically, this is kind of sums of deviations from the mean. You may recall when we calculated standard deviation, that was that's kind of one step that you do is you um, subtract all the the individual observations from the mean, um, in this case the grand mean. And you're kind of doing this for each individual observation, then also the uh, sample means from the grand mean, um, and multiplying by the, the the sample size for each of those. Uh, anyway, you don't need to know the, the formulas underlying them, but I, I do want you to know this that's what SS is, in case your boss asks you about that. What is SS? That's the sum of squares. So this is just another measure of variation. If you take each of these and divide by the degrees of freedom, you'll get the MS. Okay, so that's that's another thing. Um, to show. So here I've just calculated that myself. This isn't given to you, but that's how MS is calculated. Let um, me divide by the by the degrees of freedom. And you remember from the standard deviation uh, formula, we divide by n minus 1. So that makes sense that we would um, divide by this um, to get this. So just to kind of demystify what's going on here in the table so you know a little bit about what's going on. Sum of squares between groups, sum of squares within groups. Um, and here's the, um, the, the total. Okay, so probably won't use those a whole lot, but just so you know what they are. Okay, so when you're reporting results, of course, there's APA formatting that you want to follow. The F, the, the letter F, when you write this out, you want to italicize it, capitalize it. Uh, the degrees of freedom will follow in parentheses. Those two numbers, you have the, the small number first, the between, between groups, degrees of freedom, and then after that, the within groups, um, degrees of freedom. So that's the big number. Uh, I don't think you're going to have a case in which between groups is going to be a bigger number than the within groups because you're going to have more than one observation in each group. So these two numbers are going to be separated by a comma. You're going to want to have a space after the comma. Uh, equal signs, you're going to want to have spaces before and after. Write the F statistic out to two decimal places, round it to two. The P value goes to three decimal places, and remember there's no zero in front of the decimal. For an F statistic, if it's less than one, then you do want to report the zero, put the zero. Basically, if, if, a, if a number in APA format can't go above one, then you don't write out the zero in front of the decimal. You're going to report the exact p-value. Don't just say p was less than 0.05 or p was less than 0.01. Unless the p-value is less than 0 0.001, then you can write less than 0 0.001. Okay, so here's some examples. F in parentheses, 3 comma 61 equals 29.72, p less than 0.01, because we did have that um, net in this case. Okay, and then um, that's just some, some other numbers that I made up just to demonstrate if you have a p value that you can report um, to exact uh, digits. Okay? So by the way, um, as I mentioned, you, if I give you an MS error or MS um, within groups and then an MS between groups, mean square between groups, um, you can calculate F. Um, so sometimes um, if you're calculating things by hand or something, if you're stranded on a desert island, I don't know. Um, this is just to kind of reinforce where F comes from. It's a ratio. It's a ratio of variability between groups um, as compared to within groups. Okay, so if I give you these two numbers, you can calculate an F um, between groups on top divided by MS error at the bottom, 20 divided by 5, so F would be 4. Okay. And just to conclude, what, what does this tell us if we have a large F statistic? Okay, if we have a statistically significant um, F test, the F is the result of what's called an omnibus test. Okay, so this omnibus kind of means it's, it's a, it's a big thing that's all at once, and you're going to have kind of um, subcomponents uh, under this omnibus test. But this is testing your big null hypothesis. Um, are all the means equal or not? 
Okay. So if if you get a statistically significant f statistic, that means that at least one of the means is significantly different from at least one other of the means. Okay, so that's that's somewhat useful. Um, it tells you there is an effect of our independent variable on our dependent variable. Okay, so in our example before, th there is an effect of treatment. Um, which treatment? It does matter. Um, wh whatever your dependent variable is, it does affect that. Okay. However, you need to take it a few steps further to determine what the effect actually is. Okay, so where is that difference? There's a difference somewhere. We've, we've established that now with this omnibus test, but where is the difference? So you're going to need to compare pairs of means, do some pairwise comparisons, they're called, to see where the difference actually is. Okay, so we'll get to that next time.